We did it! We hit 50,000 subscribers, and guys, this is such a freaking crazy number. I still can't believe that we actually got this far, and it's all thanks to you guys, of course. I, you know, I make the videos. I make the videos, but all of you, you are the community. You made this possible. Without you, I would be nothing. All of this would not be here. So thanks to every single one of you. It's been so amazing. You guys are awesome, your comments are awesome, your interactions are awesome, you're just awesome and amazing, and thank you so much for experiencing this, all of this with me here, and being with me here through my YouTube journey. I have something special planned for this episode, and I do think it's going to be pretty fun to record. I want to look back at how my channel first started, what videos I uploaded, what decisions I made, what ideas I had, and how it all came to this point, and how my channel got to the point where it's at now. Once again, thanks so much guys, it's been such an awesome ride, and I hope you'll enjoy. It all started in the year 2010 in October when I created the channel and I didn't really have any goal or plans for this channel. I just wanted one to comment on other videos and maybe upload my own gameplay. And I did upload my own gameplay, mainly of I Wanna Be The Guy and also some fan games like I Wanna Be The Fan Game or I Wanna Be The Game Boy. But those videos were pretty random and I did not have a schedule whatsoever. So eventually I did delete them because they didn't really serve any purpose. But there is one video left on my channel, which is an example of a video like that. And it's the I wanna kill the guy Boshi boss fight. I think I will never delete this video just to have it as my oldest video and to remind me of the old days. The quality isn't really good, but the fight is still, I think, to this day, it's a pretty awesome fight and it was a lot of fun to record, so I will keep this video here as my oldest one. But there was one fan game I uploaded a lot of videos about and that was I Wanna Be The Bashi. It was an awesome game to play and definitely back then the hardest fan game I played and I just uploaded again random gameplay of me finally beating bosses or stages, and I was really proud of some of the things I did, so I mainly uploaded the videos either to show to some people I know, to friends, or just for me to just have it on my channel as I guess sort of proof that I did it. And it was really fun to do. Of course, my videos turned more serious once I started the You're Gonna Get Rape Mode Challenge, which is the hardest difficulty which basically gives you almost no saves in the entire game and I managed to beat it and that was really the first time where my videos got pretty popular I'd say and a lot of people of course wanted to see a rape mode playthrough and so they looked it up, watched my videos and it was kinda motivation and inspiration to keep going with difficult games and to try even harder stuff. Besides Boshi, I still uploaded some other fan games and even completely different games. For example, Super Meat Boy, I uploaded some playthroughs, without commentary of course, but playthroughs or boss fights or just stages, stuff like that. But eventually, I thought it was time to finally start commentary. And my first project with commentary was a 100% guide for I Wanna Be The Boshi. And honestly, looking back, I think that this idea to make a guide and not live commentary, like a playthrough, that was such a good idea. I think everyone, no matter what, will be kinda nervous when they first start with commentary, or just with videos actually in general. So taking it slow and doing something where you can be more comfortable, like for example post commentary, I think that was a super good idea and it worked out really well and it made the transition to full commentary videos pretty easy. So after the guide I attempted live commentary and you know it wasn't perfect, it wasn't the best thing ever, but I did play I Wanna Be The Boshi, my third ever playthrough on rape mode. And at least that way, I did have at least something to talk about, and I actually managed to complete it, which I think was the most important thing, that I did not quit or anything, that I, for a third time, managed to beat the game on the hardest difficulty. 
And once that was done, that was pretty much the time where I was able to say I am ready for full playthroughs, for more playthroughs with commentary, and that's really where it started with also some blind commentary series. And that brings us to I Wanna Be Like Bryself, my first series with live commentary. And I think it went pretty well. It wasn't too hard, so I could kind of focus more on my commentary. And really, I did try some things. I did get used to the whole blind commentary feeling, but it really helped me. It worked out well enough, in my opinion. And most importantly, of course, I had a lot of fun. So I'm really happy that I started with that game. It really helped me. After that, I felt ready to make more series like that. And one series I did was about the Impossible game. And you might be already thinking that yes, this was the first step to Geometry Dash. And I personally enjoyed the Impossible game very much. I did better than I expected. I expected the Impossible game to be almost impossible for me and really difficult. But already back then, I did not have many problems with it. And it was really fun to play and record. But soon, I was going to start a series which pretty much defined a part of my channel. And that is of course Camellia. I Wanna Kill the Camellia 2, the hardest fan game I've ever played back then, by far the hardest thing, and really, it went well, to be honest. I did, of course, complete it in the end, but it was pretty difficult. It really challenged me so much. But I still had fun, I was very very proud of myself and very happy that I did it in the end. And I think the series was pretty good, there were some pretty good moments. And it was a really long series, so one of my first series and already pretty darn long. And like I said before, at that moment I really felt ready to just record whatever I wanted to. So I did some games like Super Hexagon, which was really fun. It was crazy, and I still think that this game is super crazy. I still play it nowadays a few times, because it's so crazy, but also at the same time so much fun. So that was also a series I did. Another series I did was The Binding of Isaac Rebirth, and I was pretty hyped for the game, but the recording didn't really work out, the videos didn't really go anywhere, but it was still fun to record, and at least I have my first run, my first reactions to this game. And after some random playthroughs like that, here and there, it was time to go to the sequel for I Wanna Kill the Camellia 2, of course, I Wanna Kill the Camellia 3, and it's kinda insane how quickly we kinda caught up to the present, because right now, you know, Camellia 3 is still a thing. I still have not completed it, and already back then I started it. Of course, a massive project. Not even sure if it was a good idea, if I'm really ready for it, because it's just so darn hard. By far just the hardest thing ever, hardest fan game I ever tried. I don't think I will even think about going harder than Camellia because of how just insane it already is. And it's also sad that it's so hard and so problematic to record because I would love to just play more and finally finish it. But because it's so frustrating and it takes so long to do like a single jump or a single save, it's really, really hard to record and get a video done. And then it was time for the legend. Finally, the Steam version came out. I was inspired by videos of Alex Payne. And finally, I myself started to play Geometry Dash. And immediately, I was blown away, honestly. Like, this series was so good and it already started pretty huge no idea how this happened because of course i never played geometry dash before on the channel that was the first episode the first few episodes i ever did and it was already kind of popular especially compared to some other series i did geometry dash started off really good and of course as you know it just never stopped going just went higher and higher until to this point and I have to say I enjoyed it so much. It was an awesome experience and an amazing idea for the channel. And like I mentioned, there was no stopping Geometry Dash. It just went on and on. There really did not seem to be an end to it until a certain point. In I Wanna Kill the Camellia 3, I had more and more problems. The gameplay, of course, got harder and harder the further I got into the game. 
and in Geometry Dash, I beat Theory of Everything 2 in April. And already, at that time, I kinda did not upload videos as often as in the past. Then I uploaded one more video in May called I Wanna Play Your Levels, where I was really hyped to, uh, you know, continue with Geometry Dash and do some online and fan-made levels. But it all kinda just got together, Camellia was difficult, I beat the main Geometry Dash game, and at school, school was ending, and I did have a lot of things to do, I had to study for the final exams, so I just, for a very long time, for multiple months, I did not upload any video. But then, in September, I started recording again, the 2.0 update for Geometry Rush came out, we got Geometrical Dominator and Deadlock, the two new levels, I played them, I had so much fun, I beat them both, and from that point on, really, it all just went well. It was good, and it just made its way to where we are now. Thankfully, I did start to play some more user-made levels. I did start with the three easiest, I guess, or three very easy online demons. Then I did Ruins, which was the first, I guess, level that I did, which was not just the basic Stereo Madness blocks. Ruins was already a pretty good looking and pretty unique level. And then of course I just beat demon after demon, I recorded so many videos and I really wanted to, uh, you know, slowly start a schedule, upload way more often than in the past, and just have a good time with Geometry Dash and the other games I was recording. I remember when I uploaded the original 9 circles, which was a huge leap in difficulty from the other demons I played previously, and I just remember the comments like, what the hell, why are you doing this, this is insane. It's crazy, such a huge jump, and I was so happy that I did it because of this surprise factor and random factor that it kind of came out of nowhere, really happy that I did 9 circles when I did it. And that was also the point where I was not too afraid of attempting harder demons anymore, and there were some pretty difficult ones every now and then, but I didn't try anything crazy yet. But while Geometry Dash went so well, I did have one idea in mind. I really wanted to start this series, and of course I did, and that series was Undertale. Undertale honestly was just an experiment. I wanted to see how well I do in a more story-driven game. You know, it's an RPG, really different from all the other games that I've played so far on the channel back then. I did have this extra added challenge of the no hit run, which I think, I don't regret it, I think it was pretty good and it did make for some pretty good videos. But yeah, I didn't expect too much, I just wanted the fun little side series, I guess. Oh my god, was I wrong. I underestimated Undertale so much. I could not have expected that it would become so big in the future. And then? I hit 10,000 subscribers, and it was a huge, insane number. So I did a special for 10,000, I did a Q&A, which I had a lot of fun with, I hope I answered enough of your questions, I hope I answered them well, and who knows, I may do another Q&A in the future, maybe a little shorter, maybe just focus on the questions so I don't have too many repeats as back then. But yeah, I can really see myself doing another Q&A at some point. After that, not much changed, of course. I just kept on playing the game, speeding Geometry Dash Demons, and eventually I attempted Windy Landscape, and a few weeks after that, I did beat it, which is to this day still my hardest demon ever. I'm still really proud of it, and we will see. One day, I will beat a harder demon than Windy Landscape, but for now, I have to say I'm really happy about Windy Landscape, and it's just such an amazing demon. I am totally fine with having it as my top demon for a little longer, just because it's so freaking amazing. I love this demon. Windy Landscape rocks. Eventually, I got to the neutral ending in Undertale, and I did the no-hit flowey boss fight, and I'm really happy that I uploaded all of these no-hit boss fights, because they did end up getting pretty big, surprisingly big to be honest. So I am glad that I did the challenge and that I uploaded all of these end boss fights. At the same time, Geometry Dash was kind of reaching a high point, I think. 
I was playing Verity, of course the demon made by Sir Punch, and it was dedicated to me and Eric Van Wilderman, and it was just an awesome time to have a demon dedicated to the two of us, and just everything kinda came together, and it was just one of the best times I had in Geometry Dash, where really the community and the things that this community does, they really shine. And that brings us to my most popular video ever, which was so unexpected and almost nonsensical with how much it grew. It was the Undertale Secrets video, where I just wanted to finish up some things that I didn't do. For example, the no-hit credits, where you have to avoid all the special thanks names. And I showed off some other secrets, and somehow it just blew up, it exploded, and in a very short amount of time, it got to 900,000 views. And it's right now, as I'm recording this video, it's making its way to a million views, and it's going to be the first video that's going to reach a million, which is so freaking nuts. The Undertale community is crazy, I love it. Honestly, things were looking very, very good, but there was one problem, one issue that I was really thinking a lot about, and I was thinking about what I was supposed to do, and that was, of course, I want to kill the Camellia 3. I didn't really have any motivation left to continue it, it was so difficult, the stages, then the secret, it all just got too difficult for me, so I started not another needle game, and I did say that it was not supposed to replace Camellia and just be in between the wait times for Camellia parts that I don't just stop playing fan games in general. And honestly, I wouldn't say that it directly replaced Camellia, because imagine if I had never started not another needle game. What probably would have happened is that I would just not play any fan games at all. Because just because I play one fan game doesn't mean that I suddenly lose all my motivation for the other. I just already lost my motivation for Camellia, sadly. Like I said, it's really sad that it's so difficult for me to record. But of course, Not Another Needle Game is such a fun game, I'm having so much fun with it. The next part should be out soon, it's going to be the shocking surprise that we have even more stages. It's a really fun fan game, I'm greatly enjoying it. And I think that brings us really nicely to the present, to the complete present. Right now I have Not Another Needle Game, of course Geometry Dash, and Undertale going on. Solus is an example of a Geometry Dash demon that I really still want to beat. I did rage quit, which was insane that it actually happened. My first complete pure rage quit in Geometry Dash. But yeah, I am happy with how things are going so far. I have Geometry Dash demons, some Undertale fan games, some random games like You Have 10 Seconds or Hyper Bounce Blast, which are always fun. And of course the fan game, not another needle game, and I'm really satisfied with my current content. If I ever complete a series, I do have some more ideas for new games that I want to try out, and we will see how those will work out, I hope you will enjoy them. But yes, that was pretty much the story of my channel, I guess. It was a very long ride, but an amazing ride, and at some certain parts it went so fast, way faster than I could have ever expected, it's been amazing. And guys, once again, it's all thanks to you, because you've been following me through this journey, you experienced it together with me, and just supported me, and that means so much, it means the world to me. So a huge, huge, gigantic, titanic thank you to all of you, because you are so freaking awesome. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this little video idea that I had. Once again, I have to say it, thank you so much guys, all of this means so much to me, the support, the huge support you're giving me, and I just cannot wait to see what the future has in store for us, together with you, it's going to be really awesome, I can't wait, and as always guys, until next time, take care.